those of us who are deeply saved, deeply rooted in God and in his love and his righteousness. There are some of us who are deeply rooted in God, but not his righteousness. Some of us who are deeply rooted in God and his righteousness, but not in his love. Oh, so yeah, it gets a little tricky. So let me go with God's word. And I want you to hear me. Let's see. We are going to read <sighs> Thessalonians chapter 5. Hmm. Help me, Lord. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. All right, here we go. I'll read until I stop. There's going to be about five or six different scriptures, so don't get worn out by it. <laughs> But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh, so cometh, as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Let me stop there when we talk about being drunken. You can talk about alcohol all you want. But some of y'all are under the influence and it's not under drugs and it's not under alcohol. You know what influence you're under. Moving right along. That's part of being drunken in the night. Moving right along. But let us who are of the day be sober. That means be aware, be leery, be watchful, be alert, be ready. All right. Be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Every time I read that sentence, for an helmet, the hope of salvation, sometimes I want to add to God's word. So allow me a comedic moment right now. And for a helmet, common sense. For a helmet, smarts. For a helmet, a brain to put in it. Moving right along. For God had not appointed us to, to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor... Let me get it. I lost my place. I saw something slide across my my screen. That means that's where I'm going to edit that out. Okay. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Let me stop there for a minute. This is that sensitive area that I try to avoid. Some of you, when you have a leader over you, when you have any type of a counselor, or a leader, a pastor, a minister, a teacher, whatever you want to call it, there are times when our flesh recoils from the word, from the righteous counsel, from righteous words of correction, from words of warning, admonishments, whatever the case may be. And what ends up happening is there builds up. This is the subtle part that we are not aware of. We put a smile on it. We put some sugar and honey on it, put some jelly and peanut butter on it, and we think it's okay because it tastes better that way. But what we're putting all that on is not bread. We're putting it on top of resentment. And there are times when we resent the person who has been pouring into our lives over and over and over for hours, weeks, months, years. 
And we resent them because they're speaking against what our flesh is yearning for. There, we resent them because they speak against what our, what our desires are calling for so hard. And we resent the truth. We resent the word. Sometimes we resent God because he's in our way. Now, there's a word I'm going to use, and for those of you who are very religious on YouTube, this is going to turn you off. So understand, I'm not using a cuss word. This is a colloquialism, slang, street term. But some of us see God and God's leaders and some of God's people as this is going to sound real crass. Please don't be offended. It's for you to get the point. Cop blocking. Party pooping. Kill joy. Mm -hmm. And resentment builds up. But the resentment is mixed with love. And the love is mixed with appreciation. And appreciation is mixed with anger. And the anger is mixed with rebellion. <laughs> and it all gets mixed up in there. And you think if you put enough jelly on it, it's going to still taste all right. And it's going to be all right. And it's all good. But it's not. And God knows what's in your heart. So as much <laughs> as you want to give in to your flesh, to that same extent, you tend to resent what the leader is teaching, the leader's guidance. Moving now on down. Let's go to the next verse. And to esteem them very highly in love. I don't know where I am, so I'm just going to start at 13. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Now that's for some of you who have issues dealing with people in your daily life. You have issues with other people's shortcomings. You don't like the way they do this. They're not doing a good job with that. They're falling short and they're causing your job to be harder on you. But what does God say? Be patient toward all men, not some. So that means you can't get on the high horse and fuss because they did a lousy job. You can't cuss because your nerves are raggedy this day. You can't have a hissy fit because you represent the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have to be careful how you deal with people's shortcomings. You have no idea what they dealt with in their private life. And when people deal with hardship in their private life, their brains can get scrambled. Ergo, there goes the job. And it ends up being a lousy outcome for the day, making your job more difficult. So be very careful how you react to how people do their job, whether they do it well or whether they don't do it well, because no matter what, you have to be careful considering your own imperfections that God has been very patient with. And everybody you deal with, saved and unsaved, must be dealt with in love. Moving right along. Hmm. Okay. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. I'm going to stop there. Now we're going to move on to Romans 13. <laughs> Here we go again, starting at verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto higher powers, for there is no power but God. 
the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore that resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, let me stop there. For those of you who are out there getting counsel, out there getting prayer, out there talking to your godly friends, and they tell you what you don't want to hear, but you know deep down inside it's true, don't resist it. Because if it's based on the word of God, when you resist them, you resist God. Be careful with that. All right. We're going blow by blow here. <laughs> That's the way I feel led. All right, the rulers, verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. In other words, they're a terror to what's evil, not to what's good. Okay, we want to explain that one. Wilt thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. You know what happens when you're afraid of the power? You avoid the people of God. You avoid church. Some of you right now, when you see this video, you're going to watch it and say, oh, yeah, that's me, because you haven't come to service for days and weeks and months. Why? Because you're fickle. Why? Because if you're up, you're good. If you're down or out of bounds, you're not going to want to be around God's people. You're not going to want to hear the word. You're not going to get that word of correction because you don't want to hear it. Why? It works against your flesh. Why? Because you're going to do what you want to do. Period. Now, next. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. Let me read that again. I got to read three and four because it goes together. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword, that's the word of God, in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be suspect, subject, <laughs> sorry. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause, pay ye tribute also. For they are ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth one another fulfilleth the law. Now, let's see here. Let's see what else the Lord wants to say. See, that's that other thing that's difficult for me, because there are a few of you that are faithful, faithful, faithful. Oh my God, I praise God for you. I thank you. But there are some of you that will take, 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 and then fuss, 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 and then rebel, 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 and then avoid, 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 and not come to church, not come to church, not come to church, not come to church. But when everything's going good, then you want everything to happen your way. But you're not giving in to the body of Christ in either way, shape, or form, you're on the take. You're on the receiving end. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to leave that alone. Those of you who have an ear will know where I'm going with that, so I'll leave that alone. Okay. Now, verse 11, and that n verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Oh, no, I got to read verse 9. Oh, my God. <laughs> for this cause, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And 
there be if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself love worketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe the night is far spent the day is at hand that's a warning y'all let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light now what i want to say with this is i'm going to play a video i want you to hear this video this is time for this video to be played because some of you think that you can handle uh, filth and not get your hands dirty. I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to let the video play. See, this is dealing with three different things. How you relate to your leader, how you relate to other people and their shortcomings, and how you relate to your flesh and other people who live in their flesh. Here we go. Now I want you to hear this, this part of this video. This is an insert from another one on YouTube. And I did this uh, with a different voice quality and a different speed so that A, I won't recognize it and cause any problems because this is just too deep to pass up. But I wanted it to be part of the message. I even changed the way the voices sound and I'll even add some in, in inserts so that the timing will be off to throw off AI. But I want you to hear this is very important. There is a saying that goes, some people will never like you or stand to be around you because the God inside you will irritate the demons inside them. In a nutshell, as believers, we have to remember that the devil comes in many forms. And one of the ways he can try and enter your life is through people and relationships. This is why I believe the Bible speaks so strongly about who we fellowship with. The Amplified Translation for 1 Corinthians 5 verse 11 says this, But actually, I have written to you not to associate with any so-called Christian brother if he is sexually immoral or greedy or is an idolater devoted to anything that takes the place of God or is a reviler who insults or slanders or otherwise verbally abuses others or is a drunkard or a swindler. You must not so much as eat with such a person. Those are stern words. You must not so much as eat with such a person. We must be very careful and very prayerful concerning the friends we keep or the people we associate with. Those with a wicked heart and those who are drawn to evil, they can negatively affect you in your faith if you give them enough room and time in your life. They can affect your behavior. They can affect you in so many ways. Or even worse, they could be jealous of you and try to hurt you. The book of Proverbs has a lot to say about the friends you have and the company you keep. One passage of scripture that spells everything out clearly is Proverbs 22, verse 24. It says, Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man. This means that you should not even associate with someone given to angry outbursts because this behavior will inevitably rub off on you. You see, we should never underestimate the danger of bad company. I believe that one of the most overlooked and ignored warnings in all of scripture is found in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33. The Bible simply states, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Let me explain why this verse is so important and why we need to take this warning so seriously. Everyone you come across has a certain character. Some have a bad character and exhibit toxic traits, while others are the complete opposite and have a sound, godly character. These are the people who will exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. They will encourage you, pray with you, show you a godly love, and they will have a sweet spirit. At the end of the day, we need to be people who are prayerful and discerning because we have to guard ourselves. You cannot just allow anyone to walk into your life. Look at their character. 
Study their character, because in one way or another, they will have an impact on you. That's right. Some people are honest, while others are deceitful. Some are trustworthy, while others are liars. Some have a great work ethic, while others are slack. Your character will influence those around you for good or for evil. And likewise, the character of those closest to you will influence you for good or for evil. So here's the thing. Whoever you decide to walk with, to form a friendship with, refuse to be led astray. Mm. Refuse to be influenced or led away from the truth and into error and sin. It's a one-way street when we associate with evil people. And that one-way street takes you from purity to defilement. That one-way street will take you from holiness to sin, from light to darkness, from worth and value to corruption and decay. When it comes to who we should and should not associate with, the Bible is clear. We are told not to be yoked with unbelievers. What fellowship does righteousness and wickedness have? Well, or what fellowship can light and darkness have? What harmony is there between Christ and the devil? Saints of God, we are to come out from among them and be separate. Make room for the Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life. Make room for him and invite him in. He'll bring about a renewal and a transformation in your life, beginning with your heart. That way you get rid of all false pretenses and religiousness huh. because you will truly know Jesus. Amen. And when you truly know Jesus, your motives will be more pure in spite of you. This is 1 Peter 5, starting at verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who would call us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, settle you. Listen, let me stop right here. Some of you feel like you are suffering, 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 trying to live this life, trying to walk the way, trying to do the things of the Bible, but all at the same time, your flesh is pulling and yanking and calling and pinching and fighting and kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. That's why you need the Holy Ghost in you. Only the Holy Ghost can change that nature, can change your appetite from no to yes, from yes to no, depending on what you're yes and knowing about. I want to share this with you. You have to be very careful. Let me, let me describe this. Here's a little analogy. A few days ago, maybe about a week ago, I had, I had brought a bunch of, of mushrooms at the Seventh day Adventist church. They invited me to Thursday Thanksgiving breakfast. So that was my holiday special for the day. That was my outing. But at the end of the service, they were letting everybody know there was food in the pantry and we could go in and, and grab up. So I loaded up because everybody was pretty much done. But all these mushrooms were sitting there and Peter knows that I love mushrooms. So anyway, so I loaded up on mushrooms. And the thing I noticed, I cooked all I cooked a whole pot of them and it lasted me all week. I made myself a cream of mushroom soup. I had so many, I couldn't cook them all at one time. So what I ended up doing was putting them in the coldest part of the fridge, hoping they last. So I was able to make a second pot of soup toward the end of the week. But there were some mushrooms I had to throw away. Why, you ask? Well, let me tell you why. 
because there was mold on it. I was going to grab one and show it, but I don't think anybody wants to look at mold. It's nasty. These mushrooms, they were, they're were um, portobello mushrooms. And they were all... They they were all laying around, starting to get a little wet and mushy. That's a sign they're starting to go. And then you start seeing hair grow on it. It looks like gray hair, fuzz, sitting on the surface. That fuzz is mold. And anything that touches that mushroom that has mold is going to develop its own mold. So what ends up happening is from as they say in the streets, association brings on assimilation. As long as all those mushrooms are crammed up in there together, before you know it, before long, every one of them will have their own pack of mold sitting on their surface. Why? Because the contaminant spreads. It's infectious. It gets on anything that touches whatever is already infected. And that's the same way it is when you affiliate yourself, when you associate yourself, when you um, have mercy on evil, on anything or anybody representing evil. You keep tapping and dabbling and touching and getting in touch and doing all that. Yeah, take it personally. Those of you who I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking to. And I'm doing it in love. Because you need to be aware that you're playing on thin ice. And just because you're not in connection does not mean you're not on thin ice. You don't realize what you're playing with when the devil lays a trap for you. So listen to this. What the Lord reminded me of just now was a movie I watched years ago. And the movie was about this girl who was raised by an insane, a clinically insane, abusive mother. This woman was into witchcraft and everything else craft. And when this other girl became friends with her daughter, she sympathized with her. The daughter had a very evil side of her own. And the girl that befriended her felt sorry for her. She cared for her. She showed her kindness, compassion. She loved her. She felt so sorry for her. And then what ended up happening, the girl died. So her friend goes to her grave site because she misses her. She wishes that she could have lived long enough to know what true love really was, what true friendship was, because she missed out for being raised by an insanely evil mother, becoming evil herself. So the girl that sympathized with her goes to her grave site. Now, y'all, I have not seen this movie since I was about 21 years old. So that shows you when God brings something to my mind, he's trying to say something. I, I don't even think about this movie. This girl goes to her grave site like a lot of people do. I don't know why the person ain't there no more, but anyway. So they go to the grave site. And when they go, she sits I mean, when the girl goes to her friend's gravesite, her dead friend's gravesite, she sits there and she's crying and she's sympathizing and she's missing her. And while she's leaning on her grave and her hand goes toward the dirt, the dead girl's hand raises up through the dirt and grabs her hand. And now the girl is horrified. She's screaming her lungs out because she can't break loose. How many of you on YouTube and in our church have affiliated yourself so much on the outskirts of Satan's neighborhood and on the fringes, on the edges, playing around the circles of Satan's people that now there's a hold on you? You really got a hold on me. 
I said, you really got a hold on me. Mm -hmm. And some of you want to say, I love you and all I want you to do is just hold me. Yeah, they'll hold you all right. They and Satan and the demons from hell will hold you. They'll get a strong hold on your behind and then you'll be beside yourself in fear and in panic because you see yourself sliding down the pit and you can't stop it. And God will raise his hands and say, that's the way you wanted it? I'm out of this. My name is Wes. I'm out of your mess. Be very careful what you sympathize with. Be very careful who you reach out to. Because even though your motive to, in your mind may seem pure, the Bible says, I always get it wrong because part of the scripture talks about deceitful, so I always say deceitfully wicked. <laughs> but the word is, your heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? That means we don't even recognize the wickedness in our hearts. We don't recognize the wicked intentions because we're painting a picture with jelly and pretty colors on it to make it look really nice, to sweeten the motivation. But the real motive still lies underneath. And it's the real motive that's going to trap us, not all the trimmings and the, and the pretty stuff and the trinkets we put on the surface. That's why they say it's, a, a, it's an expression. It's not in the Bible. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Watch yourself. And for those of you who are on your jobs and you're having issues with people, trust me, folks are going to get on your last, your reserve nerve. But it's how you deal with it. It's not always the point of getting the job done, even though that's what you're there for. God is more interested on how he's going to get you done in character, in love in patience, and all the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Are you willing to ride that baby out? Or are you real ready to jump off that roller coaster? Because it will feel like a roller coaster ride at times. You feel like you're being abused and God's just letting it happen. And it'll feel very unfair. But after God has strengthened you, hmm, he will strengthen, settle, establish you, and you will be strong enough one day to stand up and strengthen the brethren around you. So stay in it, baby. Don't jump ship. Don't jump ship. Allow God to make you in these trying times while your eyes are wide open and you stay alert. Don't fall asleep behind the wheel, baby. Stay close to God in through these treacherous waters. Okay? God bless you. And know that God is for you, not against you. Stay in his will. Stay in his ear. Cry out to him in your weakest moments. God's got you, but he's not going to force you. Amen. And for those of you who don't know the Lord, trust me, it's better to be going through hell in his hands and in his care because it's all going to work out for your good than to go through hell by yourself, ignoring him. That's not a good thing. So accept the Lord as your savior, as your Lord, as the driver of your car. And ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And then walk in him, read his word, get with his people. Amen. God bless you.